Did you know that AMD's old Zen 3 architecture, released back in late 2019, is actually faster for gaming than Intel's Raptor Lake architecture used for their 13th and 14th generation Core Series processors? Yeah, nah, it is though, and AMD has some graphs to prove it. Have a look at these. See, the Ryzen 9 5950X, which is now also a 5900 XT, is worst case a Core i7 13700K, and best case, it's like 4% faster. That's pretty awesome, right? Well, hell yeah, that's awesome. The 13700K still costs at least $330 US, while the 5950X is $360 US, and therefore we can probably assume that the upcoming 5900 XT will be even cheaper. Maybe. Not sure. AMD did initially say that it was going to be $359, but then they quickly walked that back. Probably after realizing that announcing pricing for upcoming processes while as high as a kite is a bad idea. If only the Radeon division was that measured. AMD also announced the 5800 XT at $250 US, but they also walked that one back. Again, they were obviously as high as a kite when they came up with that price. That's the only explanation for why they were charged 25% more than the 5800X for a mere 2% increase in clock speed. That's okay though, we've all done it. And it's why we're going to allow AMD to come back at a later date with a less batshit crazy price. But before they do... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components, so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable, and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet, and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess, and of course, no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so if you watched our recent Q&A series where we pulled AMD up on their insanely misleading and anti-consumer marketing BS, you might be thinking, Steve, stop flogging that dead horse. We get it, AMD was naughty. And to that I say, F that dead horse, we're gonna flog it some more and it's gonna be educational. Now, if you weren't fortunate enough to have watched our Q&A series this month, let me quickly fill in the blanks. During the Computex trade show a few weeks back, AMD announced their upcoming Zen 5 processor series and in a press deck that was sent to media, they also announced new, but not really new, Zen 3 processors, basically binned versions of silicon that they were already selling, which they called the 5900 XT and 5800 XT. These CPUs on their own are fine, they're not exciting, we don't need them, but whatever, sure AMD, release them. The problem is, AMD included two performance slides for these CPUs, which I've already shown you, and as you saw, they claimed that these binned Zen 3 parts were as fast, or really slightly faster for gaming, than Intel's Core i7-13700K and Core i5-13600KF. And that's a whopping big lie. In order to achieve this deception, AMD heavily GPU limited the CPU tests, pairing all CPUs with the Radeon RX 6600, an entry-level previous generation GPU that's three years old now. Essentially, what this does is level the playing field, neutralizing any potential performance difference between these CPUs, resulting in nothing more than an RX 6600 benchmark. Benchmarking CPUs with a heavy GPU bottleneck is a bad idea at the best of times, as it tells you nothing about how the CPU really performs in games. And it's made even worse when you don't give basic information like what the average frame rate was. For all we know, the RX 6600 could have been rendering just 30 FPS, so I've decided to look into what exactly was going on. But more than that, I've included some data with a more reasonable GPU, the Radeon RX 7900 XT, which might be a high-end product right now, but by early next year, we have it on good authority that this is going to be mid-tier performance. So for this testing, I'll be using the games that AMD benchmarked with, at 1080p, using the high or highest quality preset, but with upscaling and any ray tracing disabled. AMD has included an odd range of games here, such as party animals, which I had to purchase on Steam specifically for this video. I promise I didn't, wasn't playing party animals before this video, but not to worry, my 11 year old daughter now is and she quite enjoys it. I've also gone and tested a dozen very different CPUs as I believe this illustrates very well just how silly testing CPUs with a strong GPU bottleneck is. So 
let's get into it. Okay, let's start with everyone's favorite video game, Party Animals. Yay! Using the Radeon RX 6600, which probably unsurprisingly is powerful enough to deliver high refresh rate light performance in this title. So I guess in that sense, AMD hasn't been too dodgy here, except for the fact that this is a terrible game for CPU benchmarking as it barely uses the CPU. And the RX 6600 is still a very strong bottleneck for any relatively modern slash high-end CPU. Now, AMD didn't test the 5900 XT with party animals, but they did with the 5800 XT, and they claimed that the 5800 XT was 2% faster than the Core i5-13600K. But in our testing, we found the Core i5 to be 2% faster. Maybe it's the 2% boost of core clocks that helped the 5800 XT here, but also I don't suspect that'll be enough to pull it ahead of the Core i5. Also, if you look at the 1% lows, which AMD didn't test, or at least they didn't provide the data for, the Core i5 is 6% faster. But what if we retest party animals with the Radeon RX 7900 XT? Well, doing so changes quite a bit, and now the 13600K is 13% faster than the 5800X when comparing the average frame rate. This is still a poor title for testing the gaming performance of CPUs, because as I said, it's just not very CPU demanding, but at least this more CPU limited data provides us with a bit more insight into how these CPUs really perform. Naraka Blade Point is another game that I haven't used for testing before, but this one seems a bit more legitimate as a CPU benchmark. That is assuming that you're not using a Radeon RX 6600. Seriously though, this one is super dodgy by AMD. Using an RX 6600, you're about as GPU bound as you could possibly be. Even with a Ryzen 5 2600, it's able to match the 7800X 3D and 14900K. So this data is extremely useless and it blows my mind how often we see requests for this sort of testing. Even with the 7900XT installed, the game is still, for the most part, GPU limited, so Naraka Blade Point doesn't appear to be a great CPU benchmark. Oddly, AMD used this game to claim that the 5900XT is 4% faster than the 13700K, which is really odd because with an RX 6600, there's simply no chance that's true. And with a faster GPU like the 7900XT, the Intel processor is actually a few percent faster. But yeah, not a great CPU benchmark, this one. Tiny Tina's Wonderland is a game that we have used in the past for CPU benchmarking, but then quickly dropped it after it became apparent that it just wasn't demanding enough for testing modern processors. And that's especially true when using an RX 6600. AMD did claim no performance difference between the upcoming 5900 XT and 13700K in this title, and we see that that's certainly true here, again when using a previous generation entry-level GPU. But even with the 7900XT installed, we see that Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just isn't that CPU demanding, with no real performance drop-off until we get right down to the super old Ryzen 5 2600. So again, AMD used another game that doesn't really stress the CPU, for a CPU benchmark, and then proceeded to ensure that it was as GPU limited as possible by using an RX 6600. Okay, Cyberpunk 2077. Finally, we have a game that is actually quite demanding on the CPU, or really very demanding, or at least it would be when going above 60 FPS. We're not even using the ultra preset here, as that hammered the frame rate down into the 40s. So with the RX 6600, I decided to drop the quality preset to high, and even then we're left with totally useless data. Again, oddly, AMD has claimed under these conditions that the 5800 XT, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is 12% faster than the 13600K. What the actual F-bomb AMD? How could that be even remotely true? I'd love to know what settings they're using and how they're testing the game to make the 5800 XT 12% faster than a 13600K. That is pretty wild stuff. And making AMD's 12% claim even more insane are the 7900 XT results. Here the 13600K is 27% faster than the 5800X and 35% faster when looking at the 1% lows. Granted, we are testing the Intel CPUs with high-speed DDR5 memory, but even with the slowest possible DDR4 memory you could find, the 13600K should still be able to beat the 5800X. In fact, with a GPU such as the 7900XT, memory speed really shouldn't be that crucial. 
And really, this shouldn't be shocking information to anyone. It would be crazy if Zen 3 was as fast or faster than Intel's latest generation architecture that competes very well with Zen 4. Now for testing F122, I dropped down to the high preset, which disables ray tracing and allows older GPUs like the RX 6600 to render pretty high frame rates at 1080p. We see that only the Ryzen 5 2600 drops off here. The rest of the pack is heavily GPU limited. So once again, we're not really learning anything here in regards to CPU performance. AMD claimed to have a 1% advantage for both matchups, but we're not really seeing that here. Okay, so retesting with the 7900 XT changed things quite a bit. The 13700K is now 28% faster than the 5950X, while the 13600K is 17% faster than the 5800X. So it's a bit odd that AMD would claim to have a small performance advantage in this title when that's not at all the case. Finally, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I'm going to presume that AMD was using the built-in benchmark for this one, which is a terrible CPU test. It's really just a GPU benchmark. So we're testing in-game in the village section, which is substantially more CPU demanding, though you wouldn't really know it with a Radeon RX 6600, as all high-end CPUs were limited to the same 96 to 97 FPS. Again, AMD claimed that the upcoming 5900 XT, which is really just a 5950X, is 1% faster than the 13700K in this title, so let's take a bit of a closer look at that. Really, the margin isn't that huge here. The 13700K is 7% faster, or 12% faster if you compare the 1% lows. The 5950X actually does really well relative to the 5800X, but yeah, the results are miles off what AMD claimed. So in conclusion, you could say that the 5800X and 13600K are identical for gaming if you wanted to grossly misrepresent the gaming performance of Intel's processor. And if you go with a Radeon RX 6600 using an odd batch of six games, this is what you get. Intel wins by a percent, not AMD winning by 2%, mind you, like they claimed. But if you benchmark these CPUs using an odd batch of six games, but with a 7900 XT, the Intel CPU is 13% faster on average. Uh, we've shown using more demanding games that are probably more suited to CPU benchmarking that the average is more like 28% in Intel's favor, but even the 13% we're seeing here is very different to what AMD claimed. Now, for the 5950X versus 13700K, using the RX 6600, and again an odd batch of six games, they deliver the same performance. Then with the 7900 XT installed, the 13700K was on average 16% faster, not quite the 36% we see with the RTX 4090 and more demanding games, but again, very different to what AMD showed us. So there you have it. AMD's bad benchmarks are indeed bad and frankly unnecessary. AMD should have just announced the 5900 XT and 5800 XT and left it at that. There's no need to show gaming performance for Zen 3 processors that we've had for like three years now. Everyone knows what they are, and without a hefty price cut, they're really not worth buying for gaming. The 5900 XT might make sense for a productivity CPU, assuming it is much cheaper than the 5950X, and you're already on the AM4 platform. But for gaming, surely the 5700X3D for $200 makes way more sense than the 5800 XT. As for benchmarking CPUs with low-end GPUs, I hope we're starting to make some headway here with viewers who believe testing with an RTX 4090 at 1080p is misleading, inaccurate, or whatever else they come up with. The idea is to see how many frames each processor can throughput, allowing you to compare their performance and work out which one offers you the best value at a given price point. I get the idea of testing with a more realistic GPU. It makes sense on the surface but it is a deeply flawed approach that tells you nothing useful, and really, if anything, it only serves to mislead. Pretending that a Ryzen 7 5800X is just as fast as a Core i7 13700K for gaming might make you feel good about that Ryzen processor, but outside of GPU-limited gaming, it's simply not true. We also found that the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D was no faster than the Core i3 12100 when using the RX 6600 but I'm sure you'll find the Ryzen 7 processor is indeed much faster for gaming, and it won't take you too long to discover this when you're actually gaming. Anyway, this is like my third video on this subject, so for those of you who are yet to be convinced, I doubt I got you with this one. As for AMD, this was an embarrassing and unnecessary marketing blunder. 
and I'm most annoyed about the fact that I now have to benchmark these CPUs when they're released. Ideally, I'd kind of just like to ignore them, call them what they are. The 5900 XT is a 5950X, and the 5800 XT is a 5800X. But now I'll have to provide you some benchmarks to prove the obvious, so thanks for that one, AMD. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these RX 6600 benchmarks. I know I did. And don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly, get some cool perks in return. We have Floatplane Patreon. Signing up to either one of those things will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, and some Q&A stuff. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.